Right, good morning and welcome to Manson. Uh, I spent a lot of time down here last year. I was fishing the new lake last year and you have to do a year on there before you can fish this one, which is the old lake. Uh, this is the one I really wanted to fish, to be honest with you. It's got the uh, the big old character fish in called Arnie. Um, he goes about 44, 45 and maybe a little bit bigger towards the back end of the year. Uh, it's a fish I really fancy catching, to be honest. And uh, I'm on my second session now on this lake. Uh, I thought it might be not quite nice if I do some kind of a blog um, where I talk about my highs and lows on here and hopefully we can sort of lead up to the catcher. Um, if I start by winding the clock back two weeks ago to my first visit, had a nightmare journey on the way down, got stuck on the M62 and uh, there was a big crash on there and air ambulance and all sorts turned up but the traffic was at standstill for maybe two hours. Uh, the journey took about four in total, I think, and it wasn't the best. And by the time I got here, um, all the swims were gone, except for one that was in the far corner called the bay. It's one of those swims where you feel a bit cut off from the rest of the lake and you can you can get up trees and what have you and have a good look and there was just no fish there. But I decided to spend 24 hours there because if there's baits, you know, if you've got rigs in the lake, then there's, there's always a chance, you know, something could move in and, and you might just nick one. But um, no bites were forthcoming in the first 24 hours. But I did notice a, um, a, a chap over on this side of the lake who was, who was leaving. Um, the next day so I moved over through the gear in the van and got round here quick before anyone pinched the peg but uh, I got round here and I, I found a couple of fish straight away that were they were sort of cruising about in the sun um, so I got the the big old bag of uh, chum mixers out of the van and, and uh, proceeded to fling a few out there with a the catapult uh, I actually got a couple of fish taking mixers one was a uh, probably a mid-20 common that was uh, taking quite confidently uh, doing the old Pac-Man thing across the surface you know and uh, he looked really catchable but I had to make things difficult and uh, there was another fish, a bigger one, um, a mirror and I thought yeah I'll, I'll try for the bigger one um, so I got a mixer in his path and he was taking the odd one of the freebies but he wasn't really confident you know and. Um, he did actually take my hook bait. He was um, when he took it, he, he approached it from uh, directly behind, and he was facing me when he took the bait. Um, and as quick as he sucked it in, he blew it back out. You know, there was no chance for a strike. And with him facing me like that, there's a, you know there would have been uh, very little chance of me uh, hooking him. Um, so that was a shame. But uh, I thought it was a little bit too good to be true on my first trip. Uh, the rest of the session, really. Um, was uh, about, it was all about me creeping up and down the margins to the left of this swim. Um, there was fish sort of cruising up and down there and, the, and that was basically their route to get to this uh, snag tree in the corner. They were cruising along that, you know, they were sort of taking that route down the margin. Um, they were heading straight for this tree, they weren't hanging about and uh, straight for this tree they'd sit there for sort of 10 or 15 minutes and then they'd, uh, they'd, head, they'd head back out so I positioned two I, I sort of set tr two little traps along that margin uh, hoping that one one of these fish might just drop down and pick something up you know and on the way in or out of this uh, this area um, I'd actually nicked a, a GoPro camera off a mate of mine Phil and I thought it might be uh, quite interesting to see if I could get some footage on this of these fish that were cruising up and down this margin. Um, so I don't think it's ever been done on this lake before. It's uh, normally quite a coloured lake um, because there's, there's sort of a, um, a dike, like a drain that runs into the lake when it's been raining. And uh, it, it does get a lot of colour, you know, but um, two weeks ago it, it was quite clear and uh, you can see from the footage that uh, it's quite interesting really. You can see the fish sort of making the way along this margin. Uh, you can see some uh, dead reed stems there in the water. I've just got uh, one of my traps is just in front of those. You can't quite see it on the, uh, on the camera but um, I have got a rig down there. A, a little bit of bait scattered around you know. But, the fish never looked like they were going to drop down and take anything really, you know, they were uh, intent on making it to that uh, snag bush, as I say, and uh, 
I think that was all that was on the minds. It was uh, it was strange, really. Um, yeah, there's probably half a dozen fish, or maybe a little bit more than that, that were going up and down that margin, and not one of the fish looked like it was ever going to pick a bait up. Um, I had um, using a bit of particle over one rod, and uh, the other rod that was a bit further up um, to the, the overhanging bush was uh, that had a more visible pop up on, um, not a fluoro, like a dull yellow colour. Um, so a colour that's done really well for me in the past, and uh, I did think I might, you know, sort of nick one on that as it just catch its eye on the way past, and a fish might just drop down on that, but uh, it never happened. Um, a little bit later in the session, I, uh, I managed to get the camera in, actually into the snag bush where the fish were going. Um, I sort of crept in through the brambles and everything and, and sort of wriggled my way down through this bush and uh, I managed to, to stab the, uh, <laughs> managed to stab a storm pole into the, uh, into the bottom down there with the camera in and uh, you can see a few of the fish sort of heading into that bush. I'm not sure whether they clocked the camera. Uh, maybe this, the case in the waterproof case on the camera may, may have been sort of uh, maybe may have been a little bit shiny or some light reflected off it or whatever. But it, it's it's like the uh, you can see from the footage that the, the fish sort of you know they sort of noticed that something wasn't right there, even though I'd put the camera in amongst some uh, some sort of debris on the uh, on the on the bottom. Uh, they didn't actually go all the way into the bush and spend any time there. They sort of cruised in so. Sort of, noticed that something wasn't right and, and sort of made the way back out. Um, there's actually a, a, a catfish that's lurking around under there as well, you can see on the video. It's quite interesting. Um, it was the perch that made me laugh on the video, to be honest with you. You can see the perch, they sort of look startled when they see the catfish. And, uh, and then as the catfish turns and they realise they're not going to get eaten, they go and swim alongside it for some reason, which is... Uh, a little bit strange, but it's, it's interesting, you know. So that was the uh, that was the first session, really. That was like I say, no, no bites were forthcoming. Um, a couple of fish did come out that weekend, and they, they came off the island. Uh, the lads like to drive the bait boats tight to the snags on the island, and uh, it, it does get them quite a few bites. Um, the peg I was fishing, Neville's, does actually fish a section of the island normally, but there was a guy to the um, in the peg to the left who'd already claimed that uh, water before I came in. Um, I'm a lover, not a hater, and I'm not one for arguing over swims, so I'll just crack on with what you know what water I've got. Um, so that was that. But we're on the second session now. I've ended up back in the same swim. Um, funnily enough, uh, there wasn't a a massive amount available when I arrived. Um, the two pegs that I really fancied uh, were gone. So I ended up back in the same swim. It's almost like a different lake though. The water's coloured up because there's been quite a bit of rain. Um, I've got a section of the island this time which I'm pleased about. So I've got two rods on that at the minute. And I'm fishing the margin again to the left um, where I'd seen the fish um, two weeks previous. Right, that's me all packed up. Um, another tricky session really on Manson's Old Lake. Did manage to get a little result in the end though, in the form of an 18 pound mirror. Um, I'd used some particles on, on the left hand rod. <coughs> and uh, these are from a new company that me and a friend of mine have formed. Cutting Edge Products it's called. These are some particles that we do. This, this one in particular is called Vanilla Pulse. It's got some larger items in there. It's got some maize and some chickpeas. Let's give the camera a bit of a look at that. Uh, the PVA friendly and shelf life, you can pretty much leave a bucket of these in the back of the van or in the back of your car and forget about them really until you need them. So it's really convenient. But I would uh, made a PVA bag up with these and I put a chickpea on uh, and a piece of maize on the hair and uh, whipped it out to a, an overhanging bush on the margin to the left. About half two this morning the rod ripped off or, well, not ripped off, I should have really just gave me a couple of bleeps because I was locked up, but the uh, the rod tip was cranking round, you know, and there was an angry carp on the end. Like I say, not a big one, 18 pound, but we'll uh, we'll take that. It's always nice to have a blank saver. Um, we'll see what we can get next session. I think on the next video, when, I, when I'm next down, I might do a little bit more on the rigs, and uh, really, I approach any lake with, with just four rigs. 
that I really like and they, they do they do me proud anywhere really. Um, <clears throat> I'm not talking just about English waters, I'm talking you know European as well. Um, so we'll go into a little bit more detail about those rigs, uh, you know how to get the best from them and uh, we'll do a bit more of the technical stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.